Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Mike, the Bowtie Writer. Happy Tuesday. So last time we talked, I talked about three-act structure, and I claimed that three-act structure was not some abstract theory, but instead a highly practical tool to help you get your book ready to write. And I promised to prove it by breaking out a brand new story for you this week. I'm a person who keeps my promises. I've spent the past week sitting at the kitchen table with a bunch of index cards, breaking out a story, just about an hour a night. It's a brand new story, not something that's been around for a while, just so you can see this process in action and you can start seeing the elements come together. To that end, I will be working on recreating this process of breaking the story on the laptop so that it's a little bit easier to film. I will be using a tool called Amazon Story Builder, although to be clear, I want to focus on the process. I don't want to focus on the tool. For those of you who are curious about the tools, if you check the stuff down below, I've written a blog post literally about this topic with lots of different tools and where you can find them. So, that being said, we've got a brand new story to break. Let's get to it. Okay. So we have our story laid out here. I've got this setup where I've got the characters here in the leftmost column, and then I've got the three acts, and I just have some of the basic structure of this story. Um, also, Amazon Studios has what's called a drawer here, um, and so in this drawer, I'm just putting any kind of world-building notes that I have here. So we have a portal world. That's the kind of story that I want to write. It's a simple kind of portal world, so kids go through to the other side, and somehow for the price of magic adults, their memories get hazy as they go through the portal world. I started with two characters. I've got a sister. She wants to save her brother. I don't want her brother to just be a toddler, though. I want him to have some agency, so he's going to be a bit older, and he wants to get out of the boring family, and so his arc's going to be that he grows to love his family. So that's where I started with. Now... I had some ideas for how we're going to fill in some of the inciting incident a little bit and just a, a little bit of that framework. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the audio and speed up a little bit and you'll see me filling out uh, the bits of Act 1 and Act 3 that I work with, uh, just sort of general framing. And then we'll get back to explaining just exactly what we set up for the story. So there we go. So, we finished our work for part one, and I just took some of the ideas that I'd had a little bit and developed them. So, the brother, I decided that the brother, he's not going to be kidnapped at first, he's going to make a deal. So he's going to make a deal with some goblins to go into the fantasy realm, and that seems kind of exciting, seems kind of fun. Um, naturally, once he makes that deal, the first thing she's going to do is go try and talk to her grandparents, and this is where she's going to learn the grandparents' secrets. So they're going to, like, help her get ready to go into the magic world because they themselves can't. Um, and then we've got our gateway. The gateway is when she actually goes into the magical world. She can't go home until she has her brother. That's sort of our transition to Act 3. Um, I also added an introductory scene. This is where we're going to introduce the kids. We see what both the kids want. Also, I have a little bit of an idea of how the story is going to end. Uh, the kids are going to leave the magic world at some point. Uh, they're going to end up back home, and then they're going to be leaving their grandparents, and that's going to be kind of that. So this does let me think the characters, I should also include the grandparents, and I, I like the idea of expanding upon their role a little bit. Now, when it comes to Act 2, one of the things that I need to start doing when I start filling out Act 2 is that... I, I want to start kind of alternating storylines a little bit. I want to have both the brother and the sister have their adventures, and so I'm going to kind of alternate scene for one, scene for the other. In order to make that a little bit more visually manageable uh, for the video, I'm going to actually add two Act 2 columns, uh, one for the sister and one for the brother, with the idea that I'm going to interweave those as I go, so I can see both of their arcs pretty clearly. So when I'm going to work into Act 2 for the first part, I'm going to split those two Act scenes, and then I'm going to add just some basic elements that I like from fantasy portal stories. And so, uh, again, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, speed up the video a little bit, and you can watch me as I start trying to expand Act 2 and make Act 2 a little bit more vibrant and flesh out exactly what goes on in this portal world. I still don't have a climax yet, I still don't really have a crisis, 
that's okay, but I've got sort of my framing story. So, all right, let's get to it. Okay, let's go over what we've done and where we're at. So now at this point, they entered into the magical world and we've got the out of the magical world. I split act two into the sisters and the brothers and the brother was actually the easiest for me to start with because we know he's fallen in with bad people. So a deal goes wrong. I decided I like the idea of while he's there, I want to show him interacting with some of the goblins and stuff. And I like the idea of a kindly ogre. So this idea of this ogre's arc is that he's going to make friends with the ogre, the ogre's going to want to not do stuff that's bad with him, and so the ogre's going to get kicked out, um, and then maybe he'll meet up with the sister sometime later. I also added the kindly ogre over as a character card. So that was sort of the brother's arc that we had. We, he's with goblins, they're taking him somewhere, where's that? Uh, for the sister, I like the idea of her trying to find an ally with her grandparents' help, someone who knew them when the grandparents came through. So uh, magical allies are definitely part of these famous stories. So I came up with Ricardo Willingham uh, Forestwood Longfellow. I just, I just made an absolutely ridiculous name with, and he's going to be a fairy person with wings and he's going to think he's amazing. I also like the idea that he has debts that he must pay. That might come up later. So this is kind of where we are. Now, I've got some open questions still. I don't know exactly what the climax I'm building towards. I know that the goblins have the brother. Where are they taking him? Why did they try to kidnap him? What's going on there? Also, the sister, she's going to be on the trail of her brother. She's found an ally. I did have a challenge with the ally. I don't know exactly what the challenge is going to be, but she's going to have some challenge that she overcomes with Ricardo's help. I'm going to work on trying to expand Act 2 a little bit, uh, trying to answer the questions of where the brother's going, and I'm going to work with the sister a little bit more to put her in an interesting bit of agency trying to track down her brother. So, uh, again, we're going to speed up the video a little bit, take a look. for this next part what I did was I started with the question of where are the goblins taking uh, the the boy and I decided that they are taking him to meet a wizard uh, and I wanted to subvert the kind of common fairy tale trope that evil things are ugly so this wizard he has a reason to dislike the boy but it's going to be a really nice castle. He's going to actually be really nice and jovial and kind of cool. And so we want to put that cognitive dissonance there for the reader. But I want to be building up towards a choice. Uh, the choice is where ultimately the wizard's going to choose between his sister and his family and being in this magical world or doing something for the wizard. And he's going to choose his sister. That's going to make the wizard angry, and that's going to set up for, like, a, a ticking time clock. All right, fine, I'm going to do this magical ritual in the next 24 hours or, or something like that. So the wizard's going to then reveal that he's really bad at this point. That's also going to lead up to storming the wizard's castle. I don't know exactly how that's going to work, but they're going to try to storm the castle. I like the idea of the kindly ogre kind of helping out. That might be from the Princess Bride of lifting the big heavy gate or whatever, but still seems kind of fun. So I went ahead and made a card for the wizard. Um, for the sister's side, I had the idea of her searching for a hero. Oh, they try to find somebody who they go to encounter. Uh, and then, you know, it turns out that ally has died. So she's going to go do this herself. 
So now uh, we still need to do some new stuff. Like they found the ogre, but how does the ogre interact with this? We still don't really have a crisis for the sister's side. So we need to do some more work on her story. So uh, I'm going to work on fleshing this next week. For her arc, I really liked the idea of Ricardo turning her in, and maybe he didn't want to do that. Maybe that's because of his debts, so he turns his he turns the sister into some third-party enforcers. And I like the idea that these enforcers, they just automatically show up and, and they, they capture people. So that's kind of neat. So she gets caught. What's going to have to happen is she's going to have to escape. So we know that. Somehow she's going to escape using her grandparents, but I want to make sure she has increasing agency here. Now, as soon as she escapes, the first thing she's going to do is she's going to catch Ricardo, and she's going to demand that he take her to the castle. I actually moved the scene a new leaf down here because I think at this point I want to increase the tension. They don't know that there's any timing, so I like the idea of the ogre saying, no, wait, I know where they're going, I know where they were, and I know what he does to people, so we need to hurry. Um, and so then storming the castle becomes the crisis for her arc, uh, they're actually setting out to storm the castle, and that's where they maybe encounter some goblins or something like that. You know, there's a lot there that they could do. Exactly how the sequence goes, there's a lot to think about. And then, um, actually confronting the wizard, I had the idea of these, like, third-party automatons that she encountered that Ricardo turned her into. I thought that was really neat, and I thought that we could use that so that when she actually encounters this wizard... She sort of tricks him, and she verifies and proves that, that he broke a law or, or something. You know, he did the thing that triggers the automatons, and these unstoppable automatons show up and capture him. That's with her agency. Uh, she's the one who does that. And, and so I want to be very careful that I'm avoiding a deus ex machina, but that's sort of her plan. And that's a rough arc of this story. Whew. So that's it. That's all there is to it. That's how you break a story. I'm not saying that this story is overwhelmingly original or brand new or amazing, but you can start seeing some of the threads come together. And in particular, when you're working this way trying to break a story, if you have an idea for something that you want to change, maybe you want to see about Ricardo turning her in directly to the wizard instead of this whole automaton thing. Well, to do that, just a matter of changing a couple of cards. And it's a lot easier to change one or two or three index cards than it is to throw out 200 pages of your masterpiece that you've been working on for months. The whole point of this process is to give you room to experiment so that you can get an idea of where your story's going. If you have an idea of where your story's going, you can instead spend your energy figuring out how to make the details and the elements pop and be super creative, instead of having to waste energy trying to answer the evil question of what's next. So that's all I have for this week. If you liked what you saw, please feel free to like, share, or subscribe. Also, I know this video is a slightly different format. Let me know if you liked it or if you hated it. If we liked it, I'll see about doing more like it in the future. If you really didn't like it, we'll try to stay away from it. If you have any questions about this process, let me know down in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Otherwise, that's it. That's all I have for this week. I'm Mike, the Bowtie Writer. I will see you all next time.